All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got an international superstar in the building. If I miss anything, let me know. We got the founder and CEO of Hair Queen LA and Hair Queen uh, Uncut. Hair Queen Uncut. We got the producer of an upcoming reality TV series called All American Hairstylist. Mm -hmm. And we just got an overall good dude, mm -hmm. Big Moyo the Exotic. Big Moyo, Big Moyo the, the Exotic. In the building. <laughs> How you guys doing? We doing all right, man. We would be excited. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for having me, Yeah, guys. thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, the reason I have contact with him is because I am an avid consumer of Hair Queen LA Oh, hair. man, thank you for the support. <laughs> like, how many weeks do you have so far? I think that I've total probably bought, because I was remember I was buying a wig every two weeks for, for a while. For a while. Yeah. So I might have, like, maybe 15. 15. And I I those a, are not cheap. Like, so, they're not cheap. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the, she's the been ones, supporting my company for yeah. a very long time, and thank you for that stuff. Absolutely. I am very sweet, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys really do take care of your clients when they come. So it's Thank like you. a whole experience. I've Thank had you. all kind of like celebrity type experiences mm -hmm. when I've gone that there. They give you a nice little drink. Oh, you know, okay. make sure you're hydrated. Mm -hmm. you yeah. know? <laughs> like, and nice. that's why the company is based on customer service and mm -hmm. just good vibes, you know. That's dope. Yeah. And this is going to be great for me because I know almost nothing about just the whole that whole industry, you oh, know. Yeah. So <laughs> that was a blank me, piece that of was paper me right 10 now. years ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm I was yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us how you got into um where you where you are today? Well, uh, basically again, my name is Moyo Kit from uh, Bakasa, that's a small country in uh no Kit, I'm from Cameroon, which is a small country in Central Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the age of 18, I was just like, man. Africa. I mean, I love my country, but I didn't see myself staying there just because of the kind of life that I like, you know. I decided to come to America. Why? I don't know. <laughs> and I went, after I graduated from high school, I went on Google universities in America. The first university that popped up was Delaware University. I applied. Mm -hmm. Less than two weeks, I got back to me. I got did accepted. You say, did you say De La Hoya? De La Hoya. Delaware. Oh, Delaware. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boxing at De La Hoya University, and I was like, "Wait a minute." Well, um, <laughs> okay, Delaware. <laughs> I got accepted. Then, boom. Nice. Following two weeks, I was in America, and I got to Delaware. It was like, "Wow, this school!" And that was my first time leaving the country at the age of eighteen. And boom, I got to school. I just see like so. The first thing that was kind of like strange. I just seeing so many white people. Oh. I'm from Cam I'm from right. Cameroon from Bafusam. It's a place where I mean you see white people here and there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that many at once was kind of like <laughs> fighting you really. <laughs> I was like, wow, like where am I? You know. And it's like um, our first time in Delaware too. Right. <laughs> right. We, we visited and was like, oh. I imagine I couldn't speak the language. I didn't know anything. And I come on is like third world country. Uh, after like a month in Tel Aviv, it was just like super cold and just if just having financial difficulty because I came with really no money. I was just a kid. I didn't really like think so much about. I didn't really have a plan. Mm -hmm. After like a month, I was like, you know what? Uh, it's tough here. It's expensive, and there are not really any black people. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Let me move to California. Nice. Boom! I moved to LA. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite a jump. Yeah. Quite right? a job, yeah. So I let me move to LA because I know over there we have some black folks and I'm you know that's gonna be an easier way for me to like, you know, talk to them and find my way. Mm -hmm. How did I get in the hair industry? Basically, <laughs> I have a I had a girlfriend like three months after getting to America and she was just spending so much money on her. Yeah. Like every like two weeks, she's like buying bundles, she's spending like 300. I'm like, how much? I'm broke. I could barely pay my rent and she's spending all this money. I was like, then let me do my research and like, you know, get in business. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I remember back then I just had, all I had on me, I had $75 in my account. I had my computer. I was obviously in there. It was, it was just bad. Oh I sold my computer on Craigslist for five hundred dollar, and um, <clears throat> I purchased ten bundles of hair. Nice from China. He came in. I made flyers. 
I was just around campus, just passing out my flyers to every okay. female that I would say. Okay. And, uh, you know, the girls are like knowing me as the guy that says, hey, you know. And this was in California at this That's point. in California. Okay. Yeah. And uh, when I started getting my few, f the first few orders, I just like decided to stop school just because it was like, I was already in there. And it's like, either I continue going to school and going to school and like, you know. Oh, getting into more get, debt. Get, get more debt and get evicted and be homeless. You know, as a foreign student, they don't really assist you financially. Mm. Like either you pay your tuition, pay your rent or you, you know. So I just like, uh, start hustling that way. People start knowing as a guy that sell hair, talking to their sister, family. And I saw people actually like interested in the product that I was selling. Boom, I just um, start going to every single salon that I would see around Pasadena. That's at PCC. I don't know if you okay. heard mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, Pasadena City College. Pasadena City College, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that's how my business started. And I just dropped out of school and just met good people that had me promote and today we have a team of over 30 employees we have had f three locations and uh, my company is really considered to be one of the biggest in america right now mm -hmm. Whoa. yeah so i got a chance to attend the premiere of his new show mm -hmm. and they t they showed a bio and what was very interesting in your bio was the job that you had in Cameroon. I remembered that because you you actually like went into the jungle, right? And you picked plantains, like you picked and stole plantains Plantain. around your village. Yeah, so nah. you had the hustle spirit from the, like, jump, from yeah. the jump. And I'm like, you was in the jungle? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, Cameroon is a place, I mean, it's a country of over like 20, uh, 28 million people. Obviously, wow. we have the capital, which is Yaoundé. We have Douala, which are the two biggest cities. But me, I'm from Bafusam, which is like a, the third city of the country, but it's still kind of uh, financially difficult. It has a lot mm -hmm. of difficulties. And uh, at the age of 13, I decided to like just get in business. Actually, okay, let me run the back. Mm -hmm. really interested in who I am. My dad is actually the king of a small village Whoa. in... Uh, <laughs> Your prince? Oh, so you're a prince, right? I'm a prince, yes, I am. Holy shit. <laughs> I would have started every story like that. First of all, I'm a prince, all right? That's why I said, like, you're someone like a king out yeah. there, you know? Yeah, my dad is a king of a small village there called Bakasa. Mm. So uh, me growing up there, it was just like, you know, you have the elites, the elites of the village that are like, most of them are in business. Mm. So I was like, okay, my dad is a king. And I eventually want to be an elite in the village. So I'm most of my in business. So at the age of 13, me start like hustling wasn't so much for the money. It was kind of for me to prove myself to my dad and my mom that hey, one day I could like fly with my own wing and be able to like, you know, mm -hmm. be on top, like the elite of the village. You can be a leader. A leader. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my friend, my brothers were like focusing on like, you know, being prince, having the little privileges, but it was me also trying to like just find a way to do something for myself and like, you know, make my own money and show my dad that I could do it. I don't really need him as much. Mm -hmm. I bought, he gave me a hundred dollars back then. I uh, used that to purchase some plantain from that jungle. And I was taking this to Douala Yaoundé, selling them and making money. At the end of the summer, I was able to flip my money. And my dad was like, man, this gig is interesting this kid is different than the rest of them. Mm -hmm. And that's how he was always, he always pay attention to me, he always make sure that he take me to different meetings that he was having with different oh, nice. people to kind of make sure that uh, I'm exposed to different things because he knew that eventually I could do something different. So he gave you the recipe for success. Yeah, you would uh. say, just watching him, just the way that he moved, the way he conduct himself, mm -hmm. listening to people, I feel like uh, those are the things that I learned from him. And what age was that, The where you were like flipping the, the money and the plantains I was like stuff? 13 years old. Wow. And I was doing the summer, yeah. So, so you were saying that your 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 dad is the basically the leader and your 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 brothers and stuff they were kind of like they're they were just like chilling right they were like yeah. so where did you where did you get that hustle mentality was was your dad like that too or was it like it's, i think it's really my dad is like that but he's a king mm -hmm. but first of all, my dad is uh, has five wives uh -huh. mm -hmm. 31 children that so I know of. That you know so it might be, a, <laughs> it might might be, be 131 wow. <laughs> so obviously um 
the, the family family dynamic over there is very different. Where like, you know, the dad will provide. He will make sure all the tuitions are paid. He makes sure that the mom has what she needs to be able to take care of the kids. So when it comes to the hustle mentality, it was for my mom just because like she's a fighter, right. like she's a real fighter. And uh, for me, getting in business to selling plantain was kind of to prove myself to my dad because he was really he just shows up. He's there for like maybe a few hours, then he takes off. He's always doing something, you know. Mm. So for me to kind of be like, hey, you know, like um, you need to pay more attention to me. That was kind of my way to prove myself to him. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we just had a better relationship just because like he was making sure he sent one of his uh, drivers to like come and help me pick up the plantain that I was selling. Mm -hmm. He was kind of uh, helping me do these different nice. things. And that's how I built a better relationship with him. Wow. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really, I'm glad that did that just because from there, eventually my brother went to school in China and um, I started sending him the money. He, would buy, he was buying like different phones and stuff, sending it to me at the age of 16 that I would be selling in school. You were so selling I, phones? Phones and just like oh, USB wow. keys. I've, I've always been the guy that just sells stuff. <laughs> Whatever you need, talk to Moyo. He has the connection. Hustle man. Yeah, but he started with the plantain. But after that, I sold computers, I sold Whoa. a bunch of things. And when I got to America, he was just like, okay, cool. You know, uh, now I'm in America. I could, uh, in the beginning here, I was selling bits by Dre, but the hair is really what I felt like, you know what, it's a business that's like, um, it's a... <sighs> it's a continuous on, yeah, business. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's doable. Mm -hmm. And I had a good plan from the jump just because it was like, okay, cool. Obviously, when it comes to the hair industry, I didn't know much about it, mm -hmm. but I knew that if I do my homework and I'm able to like, you know, provide something that's more than just the hair i could really blow in la because back mm -hmm. then you just go to the beauty supply you buy your hair and you leave but at my shop from the jobs i could if i eventually get enough fund i will open a shop where the woman could come in sit down and really have like a good experience have like a luxury experience because mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to wigs and stuff, it was a little bit taboo back then. It was kind mm -hmm. of like, oh, you're wearing a wig, you know. Uh, yeah, but it was mm -hmm. 2013. Yeah, when I first got here, I was like, let me kind of make it a cool thing, wearing a wig and just like switching energy, switching uh, vibe, switching looks. And uh, that's what my company... I, I didn't do it by myself, obviously. I had a good team of people that really helped me, like, you know, develop the idea and make it great. But, yeah. Wow. Having that much hair on you at a time, because you were selling hair out of your car, right? Yeah. Like you were going to different salons, presenting. That's kind of dangerous in oh, LA. Oh, man, I learned my lesson. Like I got robbed so many times, what? you know? <laughs> yeah. People oh, robbing you for the bundles? <sighs> Bro, yeah, I'm somebody to lose, lose, lose my life a few times. Because like, you know, coming from Africa, all I had, I was just my energy. Like if you meet me, you won't forget me. Just because I was like nice to the girls that I was meeting, selling the hair, I would tell them, hey, look, I'm really trying to take you to the next level. If you have like people that need hair, make sure you hit me up. I will come and we deliver. The quality is good. So people really, my business grew very fast just because like the people that I would meet were super loyal to me. The word gets around and, uh, and I was, I put close to 35,000 miles on my car in two years. Ooh. That's a lot of driving. Ooh, yeah. Like I will be to like LA, Long Beach, Compton, everywhere you call me, I'll pull up. I will just like, Ooh. all I would do was hustle, hustle. That's all I, my routine was there. Like in the morning, I get all the orders. People message me and I just drive around the city the whole day. Inevitably, being new in LA and just being, you know, naive mm -hmm. at the age of, around that thing, I was like 20, 21. Boom, went to Compton and I, this is the story, actually. I started with 500. When I hit around like 12,000, I placed these big orders. Mm -hmm. The merchandise came. And uh, this person called me in Compton. I want to buy a wholesale. I'm like, cool. I pull up to Compton. Boom. Um, I call, I'm here. And I take like five minutes. The person does not show up. I'm just on my phone chilling. Then I look on my... Uh, on the mirror, I just see like this kid pulling up with like guns. Bro, if you don't give her all the hair, we're gonna shoot you. 
I'm like, no way, this cannot happen. There's no way, like a hassle. I got to 12,000, this because I tried to take all of my merchandise. I was trying to fight in the beginning, like, man, they, they just shoot me, like, there's mm -hmm. no way I'm going to go back to, that's like everything I have, and I've been mm -hmm. hustling to get on that level for so many years. Yeah. Something told me, hey, Moyo, if you did it once, you could do it again. That's a good mentality. And I just, they took the first bag, the second bag, the third bag, and they left, bro. Oh. I just like, I went home, I was just crying, man. I was like, I'm done. Shit. Like, oh I'm God. done. People were calling me the following day. Mario, come on, we have photo shoot, we have this thing, come and drop off the hair. I was like, bro, I don't have anything. That was everything I had. Oh, my God. I know and that was <laughs> devastating. It was hard. Thankfully, my vendor in China messaged me like, hey, Mario, what's up? It's been like two weeks. You haven't placed any order. What's going on? I was like, I didn't even respond for a while. Just because I like, man, what, what, I don't need to explain myself to the vendor. Right. Like, he kept messaging me. That was like, man, I got robbed. I don't have any money to buy anything. Now nah, I'm just like, he's like, man, we've we seen you go from like 500. We've mm -hmm. seen you going from like 500 to 2,000 to 5,000 to like 10,000. And now what's going on? He's like, he's like, I'm open to let you have the merchandise that you need because we believe in you. And uh, whenever you sell it, give us back the money. In front of you. Yeah. And I was like, what? That's where that, that interpersonal connection that you built with the business comes into play. Like you treated them like a human. Yeah. So they felt good about fronting you because they trusted you. Yeah. I'm that, it, I mean, people that do business with China, I would know that that doesn't happen. They mm -hmm. don't do that. And uh, back then I was like, I see that how much hair do you really need? I was like, bro, I need help for like 20,000. I sent them the order in less than three days. They sent it to me. Bro, the lion was loose. I was Ooh. like, God gave me like the second shot. Like I'm out, I was on fire. Damn. You became a beast. I was like, people were like, I was, the drive in me was just like times three just because like I had like a week off. I was just home, just chilling. So like I was rested. Mm -hmm. So I was just on the street, just going up and down. And around that time, I met this girl. Her name is uh, Angie, no foreign. She was a stripper here uh, at the Ace of Diamond. I don't know if you guys okay. heard of it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, she was like a stripper at Ace of Diamond. And I connected with her. She really like, like she really fucked with me. She was like, man, mm -hmm. this guy is a hustler. And back then she had like, I think three to 400,000 followers on IG. Nice. And back then that was a Ooh, lot. Like, I'm talking about 2015. Uh -huh. And then she was just, she got my product. She was promoting it super crazy. As shout if out to that, Angie. Shout Ooh. out to Angie. Really. Into today, I'm, she knows I'm super loyal to her, but uh -huh. that was really the one person when she started fucking with me, everything was just over because now she made it being cool, promoting her Queen Ali. Now, whenever I would come with like my little bag saying her Queen Ali, people would be like, man, I need to post this to kind of like be... I love her, like Angie would do it, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when I would drop it off to like all the stripper or then so they would promote it. And eventually the celebrities are like calling me. And then it was like, man, now I cannot keep delivering, you know, let mm -hmm. me focus and open a shop. So like with you know, you said that you learned a lot from that mistake, uh, in terms of like what once you got robbed. How did you adjust? You know, did you start getting like, did you stop doing less deliveries? Did you get security? Like, how was, what was the adjustment after <laughs> My that? My adjustment was more like, uh, I had a parking lot in uh, in downtown LA. I think it's what the on Olympic, I, in downtown LA, there's this big parking lot. So I would try to get most of my clients to meet me in that parking lot. Okay. Mm. But some, uh, sometimes these girls were kind of, the ones that have been buying her from me, I'll be like, I'll be, I'll kind of know, okay, this one, I've been there a few times, let me just go there. Yeah. Right? But if it we're kind of like, no one, it was late, I'll make sure that, you know, if you meet me in that parking lot. You were more selective. I'm more about selective. Where you and, went. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would go with my friends. And this, I mean, in America, when I start smoking, it just like, <laughs> it was just a whole different uh, approach when it comes to life and everything. Right. My, my <laughs> vibe, everything was just different. So I would just, really smoke with my friends and just deliver and ha having my friend in the car will also make me a little bit oh, uh, less okay. vulnerable okay. you know so yeah. it's just yeah just moving smarter mm -hmm. okay. smarter nice and eventually um what really made me open heck the shop really with my uh, eventually with from like the 20 thousand i was able to flip it to like 100k mm -hmm. 
when I hit the 100k to point out like, man, I have a 100k, I felt like I was like, rich like I <laughs> <Right>. was <laughs> you know <Right. laughs> I feel like I was rich I made it then I, I, was, I called my dad I'm like look I'll make I'll do your paper you'll come to America and my dad was like no way but my dad is, he's been a king he's just been in the village just like making sure people are straight mm -hmm. just making sure he just like deal with you know the little stuff that are going on there and so your dad he, never had never been to LA never been to America Ooh. he just been like he just works all the time and I was able to bring, get him to America where he got here. We went to Disneyland, we went, we went to Las oh. Vegas, we went to like, and that was my first time actually seeing my dad um, laugh. No, not laugh, but like smile and actually like loosen up. Right. Mm -hmm. My dad is a kid that, that people call him some majesty. People talk to him doing this. It's like, oh, wow. like when he's moving back home, it's like, it's different. He's always like, like he's mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. very serious all the time. Right. By getting him here, seeing him loose and just getting on the on the horse and just doing like regular mm -hmm. stuff I was like, man, this is dope. I felt like that was what I wanted since I was I was thirteen. Having that little connection with him, King Joffy Joffre, <laughs> 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 and coming to America, uh, you know, he's yes, real similar. like regal, yeah. like right. you know, with the <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Basically, when he left, he was like, man. I really felt like I did something. Mm -hmm. And he really like told me for the first time, man, I'm, he really told me, hey, Moyo, I'm proud of you. And uh, out of all my children, you are the first one to really like, you know, do that for him. Right. He has like kids that are much older than me, but like doing that for him really meant a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, I was like, okay, what am I doing next? Boom, I just got in my room, got high, just like, took a piece of paper and kind of draw out the layout of her Queen LA. Mm -hmm. Then the f following week, I just met this contractor. I showed him the paper. This how exactly how I wanted it to be. We got the store, pay him, and he less than like three to four months, We uh, the shop was built. And nice. um, That's quick. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, but the thing is with that, it was super hard in the beginning when I opened her Queen LA. Because I spent so much money. That's my first time. I'm still young. I'm still quite naive, but I have the drive, but I'm very naive. So um, after opening the shop, I was really running. My money was super low just because I spent so much money. I kind of like underestimate how much it was going to cost me to do everything. Mm -hmm. And now I have to keep the business running and have the merchandise that's going to like. So when I opened the shop, we barely had like nine weeks on the oh. display. Oh, wow. Nine weeks, that's Nine it? Nine weeks, that's it. Because Ooh. all the money was just done. And also, when you start a project, it's like you cannot just spend the money mm -hmm. run dry. You cannot just stop. But if you stop now, you lose everything. So I had to finish the construction and really like, you know, have an opening. But you were, you had, you had bundles, right? So I had you, bundles. So you were selling mainly bundles. bundles. Yeah, yeah. And then when you opened Hair Queen LA, then you kind of transitioned to wigs. <laughs> yes. Okay. So that's a very good call just because I felt it. Mm -hmm. I felt it. The bundles thing was going, but I kind of felt that, you know what, I need to like tap into wigs because like, I, was, I felt the transition coming. Mm -hmm. Around that year, that's when like people start being super comfortable wearing wigs. Nice. And um, I barely had Nine weeks when I opened the shop, I was the only employer. I would wake up at like 6 a.m., get to the shop. I would clean the floor myself. Mm -hmm. I would like set everything, make the sales, close the shop at like 7 p.m., go home, sleep, wake up. Same thing. I did that for like a month. And then boom, I hired my first employee. Yeah. His, nice. na his name was James. When I hired my first employee, it was like, wow, I could relax a little bit just because mm -hmm. like, you know, he could like help do some of the stuff that I was taking care of, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was this skinny. I was, I was this skinny. I was tired <laughs> because it was just like so much work and right. so much pressure. After I hired him, you know, obviously these girls that have been supporting me, obviously it was a little bit hard because they were used to me coming to their house. Right. You know, but now it's like now they have to come to me. Mm. And that was also my, my, one of my biggest fears just because I, they're going to like, respond the way that they think they would you know mm -hmm. thankfully eventually they responded they were 
gosh, that's going coming. And when I actually saw the shop, it was nice. They were super proud. So uh, them promoting was a man. This kid is doing something, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they're promoting my shop uh, a lot on social media. You, uh, your shop <laughs> blew up on social media. Mm-hmm. One thing about LA girls, we don't play about the hair. Right. So I know that there was a lot of competition yeah. out there already because I mean I. Look, I was a consumer, so I know you had Kendra's boutique, and but that was we, kind of one of the ha- bigger yeah. ones. And that then I we saw. had the uh, Hair Us. Kendra's boutique yeah, is one Hair thing. Us. Yeah, Hair Are Us is really like shout out to them to be honest. Since today, I give them credit because at the end of the day, they inspire me mm-hmm. because like. Before I opened my shop, I, I had been to their shop. Mm-hmm. They, I remember I went in there, they didn't know who I was. They have heard of me, mm-hmm. <laughs> of Hey Queen Ale, but I never posted my picture on the page, so they don't right. know who is the guy behind mm-hmm. it. But I just went in there, I checked out the prices, and I saw the layout, and it was super dope. Ashley, I think she's the owner, she didn't know who she was talking to, but I spoke to her. And she was she to talk to me, but she didn't know that I was the owner of her Queen uh, of her Queen You were undercover. I was undercover, <laughs> basically. <Yeah. laughs> so back then, they were really the one that were like doing something. They're the one that really inspired me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to like, uh, you know. Them and Kendra Boutique still have Hey Kunyale block on Instagram. Oh, Josh, oh, so is this a little, this is a little tea beef. Yeah. Huh, okay. It's not like even a beef, but I understand why. When I started again, I'm a naive kid. I'm a kid from Africa that just coming here. I'm just, my back is against the wall. I'm just hustling. So back then, I didn't never knew my company. I, okay, I felt like I was going to do something different, but I didn't know that I was going to be at this level. Right. So I would go online. I would have the hair. Obviously, I didn't have money for the photo shoot and all this stuff. I would just like copy photos from IG mm-hmm. and just repost it on my page. And be oh. like, oh, I have like this hair, you know. And, oh. and then some of the photos that I was stealing from IG, <laughs> I was posting was belong to, <laughs> so <laughs> belong to uh, to them, these people. <laughs> just because I was just a kid in past, I did not just like hustling. I didn't even know I would get on that level. Right. And then people would comment on my on my, on my IG. They would be like, "Hey, how can you let start posting like photos from uh, you guys?" And then they would oh. block me. And oh. that's back then. I was like twenty, like fifteen. And then obviously when I opened the shop, I was like, dang, I cannot no longer do these kind of things. Mm-hmm. And um, I stopped. But again, I give the I acknowledge oh, it. It's mm-hmm. not true. It was just did a you, kid. Did you send her a basket with some roses? Like, oops, my bad. No. <laughs> I did not. I just like, <laughs> <laughs> not like I don't care. I understand no, how they feel. Right. To this day, if you go online now, like a lot on Alibaba, on any, most oh, websites, yeah. they steal my photos. Amazon. And I, I, Amazon everywhere. They steal my stuff. It's everywhere. And these are photos mm-hmm. of the bundles or like a finished product on most, somebody? Back or? then, it was like the finished product oh, that okay. I was doing just because I only had the bundle. I would take a picture, but that content wouldn't do as well. But when I would see someone that had their hair, well, I'd be, oh, we have similar hair. Come, I wouldn't say similar. I would just say, we have just have the people have this hair. I just put the <laughs> <This> flowers, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh my God. And then uh, that was back then. But today, people are still our picture like all the time, mm-hmm. and I don't care. So now my staff is like, man, let's we report it. I'm like, no, don't. Just because I know how what I did in the beginning, mm-hmm. how it helped, I, how he helped me. So I'm like, you know what, it's fine mm-hmm. because really. I tell my team, Hey Queen Ale is bigger than me. Hey Queen mm-hmm. Ale is bigger than just what we're doing there. Just because like, now when I go back home, these kids hustle, these kids, they want to be big boy. They want to like, mm-hmm. you know, back home, we have over 100 kids that are going to school now because of my company paying their tuition. Wow. Nice. We have uh, two fountains. So you you're providing we're providing uh, fresh, a clean lot, water. yeah. Because um, in my village, still I remember growing up, we used to walk like miles and miles, and to go get water from this river that was almost mixed with mud. Mm. Walk miles in the house, and people would drink it. So now with the effort that we are doing here back home, they have like fountains, and this is something that we've been doing for the past uh, two years, which we intend. We intend to do every single year and have like real drinkable drinkable water in every corner of the village to the point that they they don't have so that the kids, my my little brothers or the kids in the village have it a little bit better than how I had it. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of Haikunale is so much bigger than just like hair itself Mm -hmm. just because, you know, 
it's just about like it's about community, whole community and mm-hmm. just like culture culture understand that it's from back. concrete you could really have a flower growing mm-hmm. out of the earth god could just bless you and you could just break all the barrier wow mm-hmm. that's super dope and you're, you're in your village they speak french okay the ones that go to school speak french okay. the, the one that are just little villagers we have a that di- this dialect that they speak we in Cameroon we have over 220 dialects wow. mm. there are so many dialects wow. so every single village have their own little language and stuff it's super cool oh. Cameroon is a beautiful country the government is messed up this guy's been president for over 40 years. He just steal the money from the country and just like do his stuff. But as far as the people itself, bro, genuine people, we don't really need much. You're going to just see like kids just hanging out, playing with rocks or playing with whatever, but just have the best time. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, so like I'm always a beautiful place. Although the, the people that you're going to meet there, they're super genuine and just super friendly. And um Love yeah, that. so when I hustle over here, it's mostly for like them, just because I know that these kids back there, they just need the, that opportunity. If they have it, they mm-hmm. will kill it. Mm-hmm. That they have the spirit of fighters, they have spirit of like, you know, the one that will, they will stand up. So when I hustle here, it's mostly to for them to continue and be like, hey, that's Moyo, like he was here with mm-hmm. us. Look at him, he's up there like doing his thing, you know, mm-hmm. because obviously... What's um <laughs> what's the name of your foundation? So we can put it on. Well, I don't I call it a foundation really. It's just okay. like me, just like it's just like me, you know, in the summer just going home and just okay. like um just doing things. But okay. for people that want to support, just because I was talking to my staff, they're like, Man, you're doing great, but there's a better way of there could be a way where we could even have a bigger impact. They subscribe to my network. Hey Queen and Cut. Okay. By subscribing on my network, Hey Queen and Cut, we have a package there that's called a hair care package. Everyone use shampoo and conditioner. Mm-hmm. So in that package, we're gonna ship you a shampoo and a conditioner every sixty days for fifteen dollars. And obviously, that would be a good way to like whoever is watching to like support the company. Mm-hmm. And uh, um. I'm committed to like you know making a difference in my village. Like okay. I'm committed. Like one of my talk to God when I when I pray has always been a mo- uh, God. You see, when I have ten thousand dollar, you you saw me t- taking this much money and doing this. I promise you, when I hit a meal, mm-hmm. <laughs> I will do the same thing. Mm-hmm. That's kind of my commitment to God, you know, and. <laughs> that has not deceived me. Mm-hmm. Like each time I, I hit a number that's like, hey, this is a good number. I do something to just let God know, hey, I'm that guy. Trust me, I'm not going to bail on you. Like mm-hmm. I'm that guy. If you continue nice. blessing me, mm-hmm. you're going to see people. I'm going to put people in position. I'm going to continue like standing up for myself. I'm going to continue standing up for my village, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's been dope. Like, and it's not so much even the things that I do, it's just like the spirit. Because I have like textbooks that I give to these kids back home that kind of like lay out like the foundation of the things that they need to believe in to like. Mm-hmm. But some of the kids feel forgotten, bro. Like for real, they're going to have some kids that are just there. But like, there's really, the government is just like doing their own thing and they're just like, they end up not doing things. And you see like really good kids and in the textbook that I give them, I'll, you know, in the cover, I'll write a few things to kind of like remind them, you know, like, hey, it's possible, Big Moyo when we did this and that. And, you know, I was just here with you guys and you could do the same thing. The key is that right. when you make it, but you need to come back and do this and that. And that's how God's going to continue blessing you. Wow. So I'm really, I really have a movement. So the kids are really like, have, they have someone to kind of look up to. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's... Um, that's the biggest thing that I I'll say I, I'm giving my people. That's, That's dope. amazing. It sounds like you're about to have like a statue out there. Or right, something. <laughs> right. If you don't have one already. Big boy, I want like I just, I, my thing is I just want the kids to stand up because I know the spirit of the kids. I play soccer with the kids. Mm-hmm. The kids are just like fun. The kids are just like good kids. Like mm-hmm. they just want to have fun. And they just want to like need a chance. They just need mm-hmm. a chance. So if they could just throw me, just like go the extra mile and there and right. there to be like, hey, why not me? I won. Mm-hmm. That's really dope. For sure. Oh, I was just gonna say you mentioned uh, the you, we've been talking about hair hair queen LA for a minute. 
you mentioned Hair Queen Uncut. Can you talk about how that started and what that is? Basically, Hair Queen Uncut is a subscription-based uh, network or platform. It's a platform where I'm gonna they're gonna be hosting my TV shows, which is my shows. I mean, we have the first one, which is called Hair All American Hair Stylist. It's gonna be hosting my podcast. It's gonna be hosting um, my Hair Academy. Oh, so the Hair Academy is basically. Uh, People that are trying to learn about hair and um, anything beauty related. We have full courses from Eric and Tay, from all the master hairstylists in the country Whoa, up there. That's a big name. It's, it's <laughs> a big name. I mean, that's the biggest hairstylist in the country. Right. He has his master class on there. You subscribe for like uh, $50.99 uh, per month and you have access to all the courses. <coughs> wow. That's the biggest one. I might sign up. We have the entertainment <laughs> package, which is like only two ninety nine per month, where you are able to see my documentary, which mm -hmm. is called Hopes and Dreams, Hey Queen LA, which, which really tells you everything that I've done to be where I am. And uh, you get the show and the stuff. The one in the middle is uh, fifteen ninety nine per month, and that's where we send you the shampoo and the conditioner every mm -hmm. month. And you also have access to all our content and all our shows. And something that Hey Queen and something that I'm very proud I'm very proud to like, um, you know, to be in charge of. Be why? Because um, obviously I end up in the hair business just because um, I had my back was on the wall. Mm -hmm. I didn't have no money. I knew it was just like I had to survive, you know. And uh, hair, ha I've been clear, hair has never been my passion. Hair is just like what I had to study, understand it to make sure that it's a successful business. Yeah. But as far as um, if I had the chance to like, you know, or the finance to like pursue my education the way I want it to be. I always want to be a producer. So Hair mm -hmm. Queen Uncut kind of like is bringing me back to something that uh, I genuinely like to do, which is producing shows and stuff. Very cool. And my first show, which is called All American Hairstylists, is about um, all hairstylists from all across America mm -hmm. that come and compete to have a spot in my shop mm -hmm. to be able to work with uh, celebrity and influencers. That's cool. And uh, yeah, <laughs> the judge on the show is Eric Gente, who is Nicki Minaj hairstylist. Yeah. We mm -hmm. filmed the first season, which is amazing. The, the team, I mean, everyone's loving it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're actually going to be filming season two from June 1st to June uh, 15th. Oh, nice. So it's wow. the movement is really going. I actually I actually played in a scene. Yeah, you told me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> I got to play in a little scene. I was just some background, you know, stuff. I was getting my hair done <laughs> while they were while they were shooting the show. Yeah. And but when so. it comes to it, it's like this is like the example of like the girls in LA really like fuck with her queen LA. Mm -hmm. Like on some like they just understand that they this is just a team of people just do trying their best every day to just mm -hmm. like, keep a movement going. Mm -hmm. And that's the story of Hey Kunale, just like genuine support. The promo that I get from people could cost, would cost millions, really. Mm -hmm. But people just fuck with us and they just like support us genuinely. They really do. So since, you know, you're talking about the girls, the influencers, <laughs> the celebrity stylists, wh who have you worked with? Like who, who, oh, what man. celebrities have you worked with with Hair Queen LA? <sighs> who have we not worked with? <laughs> God, again, not to brag, but God has been good to us. I mean, from Nicki Minaj to Madonna to uh, who, who had Kylie Jenner wow. mm -hmm. to... Uh, how am I going to make on the stale, stale, like even people that I don't even know myself I'm not from here I got here 10 years ago mm -hmm. I remember back home they are mostly influenced by the French folks so oh, when right. I got here it's like they know everything in English kind of foreign to me mm -hmm. but like some people come to the shop and my team is like oh man that's her I'm like oh who is it and they're like oh, that's such and such I'm, I don't even know but like Everyone come to Hey Queen mm -hmm. wow. I seen um, Amber Rose. Amber Rose. Yeah. Um, Ruby Rose. <laughs> uh, Ruby Rose. I remember they come to the newer people from Stunner, Krishan, uh -huh, everyone Krishan. in the Natalie Nunn. Mm -hmm. That's really family. Who am I going to? Everyone comes to Hey Queen Ale. Everyone Rih Rihanna gets her hair from Hey Queen Ale also. Wow. So when it's like Rihanna, it's like, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, come on. That's like that's Rihanna, crazy. you know. 
<laughs> Beyonce's mother has been at her Queen LA. Come on, Tina, yeah. Miss so, Tina. Yeah. So it's, I actually spoke to her where I was really trying to get something going, but she was a little bit busy, but they're fuck with her Queen LA. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's, it's been a blessing. And I really like, you know, super thankful. Man, congratulations on yeah, all your congrats. success. Thank you. Thank this is you. Thank so you. fire. I have a I have a question because it just seems like you you're an amazing businessman, and it's like it's almost like you could sell anything. You had like a crazy background where you were selling plantains. You said like uh, phones and and laptops. Mm-hmm. So when you first came to America for the first time, and you were in, you said the University Delaware. of Delaware, right? Mm-hmm. What was um. What was your plan for the university then? Like, what was your major? Like, what did you originally come for? I, I studied business. My goal was to study business in school. Mm-hmm. However, in Cameroon, back then, 500 francs CFA, which is my currency, mm-hmm. is $1. Oh! 1 million francs CFA is $2,000. Wow. Oh. So, most people back home don't even have... A dollar. Don't even have, no, let's say people that are, have a job, they don't have $200 saved. Right. Mm-hmm. Like most people don't have $100 saved. Like right. back home when we had maids, I remember my family paying our maid $20 per month. Wow. In your, in your, no, 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 no in the uh, in, um, US, like oh, $20 okay. per month. Per month. Per month. And I remember, but even some are getting paid like $10 per month. My dream, my first dream when it comes to money, I remember praying God. I'm like, hey, when I was like 13 or like, you know, 12, I remember talking to God, like, God, if you bless me one day, give me a job where I'm able to make like, I think a 300,000 uh, francs CFA, that's a uh, $150. A month? Yeah, that was my first dream, telling God, hey, one day if you're able to bless me and give me like $150 per month, that would be great. So... Obviously, now we are like, you know, that's right. the dream is like, oh, from that to <laughs> now, it's like, you know. So it's just been, uh, can you finish your question one more time? Um, like when you first got to Delaware, what was the your plan? You okay, said, the plan, yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, when I get to America, just the, back for my mother fighting to be able to give me enough money to pay my flight ticket. She had to sell her lands. She had to sell, a, sell one of her shops that she had wow. to be able to like give me money to be able to like get to America. Then she sells everything I get here. They're telling me, oh, the tuition is was like, Delaware, I think it was like uh, $14,000 mm-hmm. per semester. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. So I pay, we managed to pay the first one and then they stole everything to pay the first one. So I get here I, three months later, I'm asking them to send some more money. She's uh-huh. like, you are crazy. Right. We obviously stole, she stole all her land. She has seven kids herself. Wow. She's like, what is she going to sell? Like, she still haven't even paid off some of the debt that she got into to send me. So obviously back then, um, the idea of continuing school was just out, out of the question. Just Almost because, quickly. impossible. Just yeah. because it's like, there's no way even if I pay for like, the second semester, the third one, I'm still not going to get a diploma. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let me move to California and find ways for me to hustle so that I'm able to pay maintaining school. So well, you didn't even really have like uh, a pointed like a uh, major or anything when you mm-hmm. went to Delaware. You no, was just like... No, I did. It was just ESL. But when I came to America, okay. I couldn't speak the language. Even hello in English, I didn't know. Did okay. you learn that at, at, at Delaware? I mean, I'm still learning it today. So basically, <laughs> I would just work with my phone. Basically, I would just write in French. It would translate in English. I would just show to people. And uh, it was tough, really. And how do I really explain it? Because, okay, there are people in Cameroon that are from, like, Douala, Yaoundé. Those are like, the capital. Those are the cities that are, like, you know, super, like, you know, advanced they're exposed to a lot of things but me i'm from bafusam which is like mm-hmm. you know a place that's a little bit further in so i just like went from there i went to do a lot for like a year then i came here so i was when i got here things were super different like everything was just a culture shock mm-hmm. you know so long story short when it comes to school when i went back to delaware it was just for me when i came to america when i came to uh california i was going to just to pcc but although i was hoping I was going to be able to like make enough money to pay my tuition it was kind of like okay let me maintain my visa mm-hmm. 
it was more like let me maintain my visa Athletes, because if right. I don't, yeah. they're gonna kick me out. Right. But eventually, when my business like took off, it was like either way, <laughs> you know, either way something's gonna happen, and you could just like you know mm-hmm. find a way to like you know be at least financially stable. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> you more than <laughs> more stable. Than Everything. Man. Congratulations on all your it's success. So crazy, you man, you're inspiring. Like I'm getting motivated to just. <laughs> It's like, that's that's why I asked that last question because it was like, there's no excuse. Like, you were able to sell to people you didn't even know the language. So it's just like, y'all ain't got no excuse. (laughs) Start that business. (laughs) Yeah, start that Um, business. And one thing I I would just be, uh, speak from the heart. mm -hmm. Leave the game aside. Don't try to get people just like speak from the heart. Like, be be vulnerable, but speak from the heart. You know, like, if you're selling something, be transparent in every transaction and just like speak from the heart people will feel it and eventually it's going to make a difference it might be a little bit slower but like just be genuine at all time and when you talk to people just like be rough just because you don't know who is who and you know have a vision and manifest and believe that God really exists believe that you know Bill Gates how many billion does this man has you know like if you're a human just like Bill Gates there's a lot of wealth out there. Mm-hmm. And if you believe that God is still in power, if you believe that God is the one that created water, that created uh, the humankind, mm-hmm. God created air that we are breathing, why don't you think that God could just like change your life just like that? Mm-hmm. God, really, that. it doesn't have to take that long, really. Right. It's Drop just about like gems. really like know that, hey, God is for real. God really... <laughs> The air that I'm breathing, mm-hmm. someone is in control of this air. Yeah. The water that we do, someone created all of that. Mm-hmm. And that person is still attentive. That person is still seeing what's happening. Mm-hmm. Talk to that man and be like, hey, you made you, I'm here. Like, mm-hmm. use me for something. Yeah. Bro, for sure. God is for real. Man, Absolutely. God is for for real. <laughs> well, listen, man, this was crazy inspiring. Your yes. story, I feel like uh, you said you're already working on a documentary. Mm-hmm. Actually, the, the, the documentary is out. Oh, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's, so it's we, called, can, we can see all this. It's mm-hmm. called all. Uh, it's called Hopes and Dreams. Mm-hmm. Hey, Queen LA. Mm-hmm. It's on my network. It's like 50 minutes, but it gives you the A to Z. Mm-hmm what happened for me to get here. Mm -hmm. And I did my best to put that together just because it was like, I mean, everyone would tell me like this story is crazy for you to not share. Mm -hmm. And to the best of my ability, I pull like, you know, footage that I had and, you know, the fountain that we built, everything that I had to like put it together. And whoever watched it, and she watched it. Mm -hmm. Everyone watched it like, you know, they like it. And I Mm -hmm. feel like, no, it's inspiring. And, um, the key is just like inspiring. But when it comes to money, I said my goal was to make 100, uh, 150 per month. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to money, there's so much you could get and it's always a bigger number right. out there. Right. So at the end of the day, what could really like bring you that fulfillment is just like seeing like a team of soldiers like standing up and really fighting for themselves and it's a movement really. Like, hey, it's, it's possible. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if people want to follow you on social media where do they go? Uh, my IG is uh, Call Moyo. Call like Moyo. Call Moyo, M-O-Y-O. Okay. Okay. And that's where I be, yeah. And um, your hair shop is at Hair Queen LA. At Hair Queen LA, right there. All right. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> right, my show, I also talk about it before I told me to cut you off, is uh, my daughter. Aww. She's like, uh, you know, that's someone that I really want to talk about on here just because... Um, just for like all the dreamers too, because when you gave me that call, you want me to come on the podcast, I was like, I was really dealing with a lot. And it was so much about my daughter. I just felt like, man, let me just go. I told you we were going to do the show that same day. I was like, let me just mm-hmm. go over there and just talk about my daughter and what's happening. Mm-hmm. Obviously, uh, with my daughter, I'm not with the, the mother of my child. And uh, it's just been tough. You know, when I came in America, I was just like by myself for like, seven years before I even went back home without seeing any family member. And eventually, uh, two years ago, I met uh, the one of my child. You know, she got pregnant after two months being in a relationship. And um, finally, I felt like I had someone. Mm-hmm. I had my own daughter in America. I was felt no longer alone. And uh, the relationship with the mother didn't get 
just like he just got her and not good. And for a while, she made me not see my child. Mm. Oh, no. And uh, that crushed me, like, a lot financially from, like, oh, financially in the sense where, you know, like, you go from here and then eventually you get the daughter. You just like, oh, yeah, have my person, you know. Mm -hmm. And then this kind of thing happened. It doesn't leave you where you were. Like, mm -hmm. now your head, you're just messed up. And I just need to share this to my soldier out there. Like, hey, like, first of all, keep your head up high at all time and just, you know, make sure you have the, the baby, having child, you know, people want to have fun. Just make sure you really calculate who you want to you want to have a baby with and make mm -hmm. sure that no matter what, you stand up for uh, what is right, which is uh, your child just at the end of the day. When you have a child, that's like, you know, God bless you with a child. Situation might be difficult for you to like, even like, express who you are just because of, this is America there's a lot of legality when it comes to certain things but don't give up on the fire and stand up for your child for sure that's just something I want to share here. Yeah, that was, a, that was an amazing little note at the end that she's was, a lucky girl yeah. to have you as a dad that's awesome yeah my daughter <laughs> she's, the, she's the most beautiful girl and uh, she keeps me going her name is Mila and that's her tattoo right here oh. Yeah. Oh, it's her whole face. That's her whole face. Okay. So whenever like I go through something, I just look at her. Hey, Moyo, we gotta keep it, keep it going. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah she's a very beautiful baby. Wow, what I a love it. beautiful story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing, yes. amazing story. <laughs> Any quick like shout outs you want to do before we get up out of here? Well, uh, when it comes to shout out, man, shout out to my team at Hair Queen LA. We have a big team of over 30 that fight every day to keep the city bright and alive, you know, for my team of color, Shelby, Tristan, Kaya, and just like, you know, the team at Hair Queen LA, those are the folks that really like, God bless me with the team, just like, it's good to have a vision. But you need like people to like stay down with you when times are kind of rocky to mm -hmm. really understand that, hey, at the end of the day, this is bigger than us and they understand that times where it's like we have situation you know the hair industry the woman mm -hmm. could be like super like exigent that things we need people that are able to go like above and beyond to make the movement rolling mm -hmm. and uh god bless me with that, that kind of team so shout out to my team at hey queen Ale. hey you know shout out to uh son because obviously in my documentary i talk about like the lady that uh helped me when i first got here when i first got to california Obviously, money was tied. There, this lady, mm -hmm. uh, so white lady, her name is Tony Burbank. She's my mentor to this day. I was sleeping on her sofa when I first got to America. And uh, during the pandemic, during the uh, recession in 20, in 2008, she lost her house. She, she was about to lose her house. Then she started like renting her whole, every room in there to be able to continue paying the mortgage. Wow. And by me staying with her, I saw how she was hustling doing that. That's how she helped me get my first apartment. And in my apartment, I, she helped me do the same thing that she was doing in her house. So basically, I got an apartment right here in front of WB Studio that I was paying $900 per month. And in there, I just put different beds. And oh. then I was renting each bed for like $600 to, to different students. No and way. I had like three beds in the one bedroom apartment. So I was able to make like $500 per month. And I was staying in the apartment also. And I felt like that's a very important moment in my life that I'm forever going to be thankful for. Just mm. because like she allowed me to breathe. Just because I didn't have money. But by her setting me up with that housing situation, I was able to breathe and just be like, okay, cool. Let me hustle. Let me kind of like move around. Let me learn what the country is about. So shout out to Sun. Shout out to you guys for having me on the podcast. Absolutely. Thank you for pulling up, man. Yeah. Oh, dropping yeah. these gems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> so my guy. This um, is definitely a great interview. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then maybe he, you have a podcast yourself. Yeah. Right. I would like to have you guys on my podcast. Yeah. Hey, let's Absolutely. set it up. Let's set it up. Really, I would like to have you on it. For sure. Yeah, yep. my podcast goes on my network. It's just about, you know, the girls that come to my shop. And um, I mean, you could you could be the first male on the podcast. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I, like I got it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love her too. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Big Moyo. Make sure you guys follow Hair Queen LA. I've been your host, Patrick Cloud. And I'm Persephone. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.